Hey everybody, good morning. It is Monday and it is time for a big project. This is my first commission job, which changes everything when I'm thinking about what I'm doing step by step. I've been thinking a lot about these two massive pieces. They are big. They are very treasured to my customer, client, whatever you want to call them. I call them the best people in the world because they are trusting me and thank Thank you for your trust. I know they're going to watch this and that even puts more pressure on. This could be something huge because if you like what was done for you, then you're more apt to pass my name along. So yeah, pressure, 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 pressure. If you haven't pressed that red button yet, you know the one subscribed, please do so now. You are helping me out so much and thank you to everyone who subscribed over the weekend. I had a great service and it was so much fun to watch. I can't even begin to tell you what it means to me. My goal right now is a thousand subscribers, which I know probably doesn't sound like a lot, but to me it's huge. And then I hope to skyrocket from there. So help me do that. I can't do this without you. <laughs> I literally cannot. You can also follow me on Instagram. The link for that will be in the description box below. And I will also put the links for all all of the materials that I've used this week. Let's go, let's get this started. I can't stand the suspense anymore. First up, I need to take these doors off and put the hardware somewhere safe. I will be cleaning off the pieces today with Dixie Bell's White Lightning, and I'm going to be using the plastic wood X to fill in all of those scratches and dings and whatnot, and uh, we'll go from there. There is a lot of cleaning to be done. Indeed there is, and White Lightning is here to help. I've got three separate pieces, that's what I think, to clean and clean I will. <laughs> there are directions on the white lightning. Uh, you did see me just dump a little bit in there, but I suggest you read the directions first before you do that. Uh, there's a lot of hardware on these pieces, so it was very important that I put them in a safe place so that I didn't lose anything that would have been bad. The visible hardware I needed to spray paint, and you don't see me spray the hinges, but I did spray them. I just forgot to film it, sorry. I'm using my favorite Rust-Oleum Universal, and the color is Satin Nickel. After 20 years of use, you're going to see a lot of scratches and dings and things like that. And there were a lot of them. So some of them were worse than others, but I think I covered all of them or at least most of them. And the base I had to do a few times. You'll see me work on that a few times because it was difficult to get that wood filler to adhere to the wood, but it did, and it looks perfect now. Big blob you see on the top of the table is really just watered down wood filler that I used to fill in all the scratches. They're, they weren't real deep. Hey everyone, it is Tuesday and it is going to be a hot one. You know how you can tell it's going to be hot because the way, I don't know, there's something the way the trees move and the, the air, it feels thick. It's going to be humid, which is going to make it very hot. So I have a little bit more sanding to do on the wood filler and uh, I got quite a bit done. I'm actually considering these three pieces because we've separated the table top from the base. So um, I'm just gonna call the table base. It's the base, it's the top, and it's the buffet. Um, the buffet I still have to sand. I'm almost finished with the table. I kept catching spots that needed to be repaired and I wanted to catch as many as possible. So that's what I'm gonna do. Paint doesn't come till tomorrow. I'm going to prime today. It just makes it easier to paint if you put primer down first. That's the plan today. Stick around. 
I'm using Benzinzer Prime and I've tinted the primer with Soapstone, which is a fusion mineral paint color. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday. Today I will be finishing the priming. I have to finish up the buffet. I've, I've pretty much sanded everything yesterday. I just have to wipe them down with a tack cloth. I think we should get started, don't you? This primer is so easy to cover with and it really, I, it doesn't cause any trouble at all. It was very easy to paint all three pieces. You just want to make sure that your wood filler has been sanded and everything is clean and ready to be painted. Using frog tape to tape off all of the mirrors and the glass so that I don't get any primer on that and then you want to make sure that you paint in to the drawers so that when you close the drawers or open the drawers you won't see the raw wood as i said before this base was like a third piece and it probably took me longer than the top i just had a dinner break and now i'm back in the garage so everything is primed guess what came in the mail today yay look this is basilisk black, basilisk black. And I did a little swatchy test with a paint stick and I am convinced that it is the perfect color for these two pieces or three, depending on how you look at it. I'm going to get a container that's separate from this. I wanna keep this jar nice and then we're gonna to get to work. All right, it might be a late night. Well, here is that beautiful basilisk black. It really is a beautiful color. It, it depends on the light, what it looks like, but it is very pretty. I used a roller to paint the table and, and the drawers. Actually, I used a roller, I think, for everything until I found a sprayer. More on that in a few minutes. This cute little brush that I'm using is called the Phoebe. <laughs> it is so cool. It was perfect to get into those little spaces on the table. I got every little detail with it. This is my second coat of the Basilisk Black. It looks really gray here, but it's really not. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, and as you can see behind me, the table has been painted, at least the tabletop, and I need to use my finishing pads. Where are they? I've got a 1,000 to 800 grit and 1,300 to 1,200. So these are pretty fine, this one being the finest one I have, and this will turn the top buttery smooth this one will take off some of the, the marks from the roller that I used. The gilding wax that I will be using to embellish a little bit on this carved area is coming today. The customer requested uh, silver, so I will be using silver to embellish all the raised carved areas on the pieces. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> Here I am using the finishing pads I just talked about. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is Friday and I am still in the garage. <laughs> Normally on Fridays, I would be inside finishing up my editing and getting the video ready to drop on Saturday, but that is not gonna be the case this week, which doesn't matter to you because in your time, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But for me, Yesterday was a bit of a challenge. I decided to try out a sprayer that lo and behold, we've had in the garage for a very long time. I sort of knew that, but as most things, if you don't know how to use something, you tend to shy away from it and there's no reason to. If you can see behind me, the table is painted, but because of the nature of the color black, which shows every imperfection, I decided that spraying would be the best solution so I sprayed the base of the table and I did that in the dark. Yeah, uh, I had my flashlight out there 
with on my phone, the things you do. I have the doors to the buffet to paint so I can prime those and get them ready. Um, I probably will just use a brush on those. All right, let's get to work. There were a couple of stubborn scratches on the top of the buffet. And sometimes you can't really see them until you paint. And I saw them loud and clear after, and I finally got them filled in and taken care of. Now I'm adding this really cool product. Uh, it's called Blue. It's blue tape, but it has plastic attached to it, and it is great for spraying. Yay! I tried to clean the velvet on the inside of these drawers. It did not come clean very easily. I used tape and a vacuum. Good late morning. It has been one of those mornings. Do you ever have? Of course you have those days. I've been down for a couple, well, for a few days with a terrible head cold, I guess. I ordered a big container of Gator Hide because I feel like this furniture, well, the table for sure, it gets a lot of use and I wanna make sure that it's protected so it will last them a really long time. So I'm going to protect it with gator hide. I'm getting close to the end and it's been so frustrating to get sick in the middle of all this. Let's get this party started. Okay, so I hung up some tarps to protect the tools, but then I'm rolling. Yeah, more on that in just a second. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. Okay, today I'm going to keep it short. It's very windy today, it's very humid, which is always difficult for a painter. Uh, the wind can blow in debris and it can stick to your surfaces, so I may have to close the door. The air is thick. Yesterday was a disaster. Um, I spent the entire day trying to figure out what was wrong with this monster. <laughs> Come to find out, I think it was something to do with the paint. I have contacted more and I'm sure that they will take care of me. Uh, it just, I, I lost an entire day of work because I was messing around with the sprayer when in fact there was little pieces of skin. Uh, and if you're a painter, you know what that is. It's, it's just tiny little pieces that look like skin, a paint skin. That should never happen in a brand new jar of paint. Now that can happen if you are painting out of the jar and you're scraping off your brush on on the edge of the jar. You know, it's good to use a different container than the jar itself, but I hadn't even gotten to that point. On my end, it couldn't have been heat because uh, I took the paint right from a UPS woman, took it in, took it inside where it was cool. And uh, so I don't know if perhaps there was some kind of problem in transport. That's absolutely possible. I strained it twice last night. My husband was so sweet. He ran out last night. He got me these. I, I asked him to. Um, they're paint strainers. They're, they're very simple. Um, it's just like heavier paper, almost plasticky. And then there's mesh right here. So you can strain the paint. Um, it's pretty fine mesh. So you're gonna catch anything that could clog up your sprayer. Katie at K. Scott, um, check her out on YouTube. Uh, she was so kind. I sent her a message on Instagram and she answered me right away because I was desperate. I was, what do you do when your paint, your sprayer is spinning blobs? And the most natural response to that is, which I didn't know, which was make sure that everything is clean and um, that wasn't really the problem. It actually, it was the problem, but it wasn't that it wasn't clean. It was that the little skins in the paint were clogging up immediately. I used a roller last night and um, <laughs> there was little skins on the roller going out onto my piece. So I knew right then that it was the paint. Melange is a great company and I love small companies. They are lovely people to deal with and I have no doubt that they will take care of me. Um, this was a fluke, whether it was heat or something else, 
uh, whatever it was, things happen, and that's the way it is. But I would much rather support a small company versus a large corporation. And these are all fixable things that happened to me. Please, please, please let this sprayer work now. No more of this nonsense. <laughs> there is a learning curve with using a sprayer. And now that I'm looking at it after learning, I can tell you that my flow is too high and I'm spraying too fast. And in a second, you'll see me painting up some of the drips because the paint was coming out too fast. It happens, it's how you learn. And I ran out of paint because it was coming out too fast. Luckily, I caught most of the drips. There were a couple I had to sand down, but it did work. And here are the drawers. Same thing. I think the paint is coming out a little too fast, um, but it all worked out just fine. These are two metallic wax colors, brushed iron and old silver, and they are by Redesign with Prima, a company I kind of like. They have a lot of cool stuff. This was very easy to use, just smelled kind of weird. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm back in the garage. I have to wait for some paint. Um, it should be here tomorrow. Thank you, Melange. In the meantime, I am ready to put on some Gator High. I'm sanding the drawers a little bit, softening them up, because when you spray, it's a smooth finish, except uh, to the touch, it's a little rough. So I want to smooth those out. The buffet, I will not be able to do anything on until the paint comes and then I can finish that. What I'm going to be applying the gator hide with is this sponge. Um, Dixie Belle sells these but so does Melange and I actually got this from Melange. And it's in this bag and it's kind of, wait for it, moist. <laughs> okay, let's get to work. I started with the sponge and the gator hide on the drawer just in case I needed to fix it it wouldn't be too big. Hey friends, it's Saturday afternoon. I slept well last night. I needed to because of this head cold. It's getting better, so yay for that. I did some research last night on a new sprayer. I watched videos from Salvage by K. Scott, Katie. Um, I watched Christina from Pretty Distressed and I watched Natalie from A Ray of Sunlight. Thank you guys. You helped me make a decision about what kind of sprayer I should use. Katie tints her top coat and that was helpful to me as well. I needed to get a sprayer that was going to fit my needs and those three wonderful women on YouTube, check them out. They are all very talented and very different. The Wagner 3000 is what I chose and I chose it because I think it's going to be just what I need. I don't want a compressor, but I do want something that is easy to control and the Wagner has easy controls. <laughs> and I will go into detail in another video. What I kind of stressed about yesterday was I put top coat on the table. It's very streaky. I used some steel wool to get rid of some of that. It did work to some degree. I'm at the point now, I'm gonna tint the top coat. I, I wish I had done that to begin with. And I'm going to spray the top coat. I read all the directions in the booklet that came with uh, Wagner. I'm going to practice ahead of time. It has a poster that I can practice with. I have to spray the top coat on the dining room table. The buffet, I still have to finish painting. I did get my paint this morning. Thank you, Melange. They are awesome. Okay. It's time to get to work. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Too much babbling. Using this sprayer, the Wagner 3000, was a game changer. <laughs> it really was. It made everything easier and everything looked so nice. Uh, I just needed a quick little sanding with my finishing pads. Controls were so easy to use. If the paint was coming out too fast, all I had to do was turn a dial. Good morning, everyone. It is 8.45 on a Sunday. 
<laughs> Everything has been painted. Everything is ready for top coat. Once the top coat is on, I'm gonna let that dry. Um, probably the table, I'll probably give maybe three coats and two coats to the base. I may do t two coats on the buffet, but not on the rest. I'm just gonna do a, um, kind of a once over. The drawers will have a couple of coats, but that, that should be sufficient. Uh, no one's gonna be messing with the buffet much. The table is really my biggest concern. I don't know if you can tell, but I put on one coat of top coat uh, of gator hide uh, with a blue sponge and it didn't go very well. Um, now, I've watched a lot of videos again and um, the consensus is it's it's just difficult with the dark color and so the best thing that I've seen is to either roll it on um, with a a roller that uh, condensed, you know, like really solid, so isn't going to leave any kind of marks at all, or um, spray it, tinted gator hide. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take just one section of the table, see how that works. Because it's so streaky, I'm not sure if a second coat is going to make it look better. And if it works, great. That is a big bonus. <laughs> But if it doesn't, I haven't lost much, and then I'm gonna have to sand the whole table. I have avoided doing this. See you later. Okay, more on that later. I am putting top coat on the buffet. And you can't really see, but it is tinted, and it makes it much easier. It looks better, and it went on perfectly until I get to the table. When you're using a metallic wax, sometimes you get it on a place it's not supposed to go. So mineral spirits to the rescue. This is a cool little trick. Uh, if you want to buff out your top coat, you can use a paper bag. And what I do is I just take one of my kind of squishy <laughs> sanding pads and wrap it around that and tape it. It works perfectly. It's time to take all the tape off. And I actually use that 180 grit pad to sand off some of the paint that had gotten adhered to the glass. Hey friends, uh, it's, wow, what day is it? It's Tuesday. I felt like I needed to update you on the status of this project. Everything, uh, I, got a, I got a new sprayer, I told you that, and it's worked really well, except for the tabletop. Now, uh, before I got the sprayer, I used a sponge, and you saw that in the video, to put on the gator hide. Um, it was probably the way I applied it for some reason. I had, I don't know, I forgot <laughs> that you don't need to put any kind of pressure into the sponge. In fact, you shouldn't. And for some reason, I did. So it turned out really bad. It was really streaky and um, yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> So in the meantime, I got a sprayer, and what I'm trying to say is um, the finish was not acceptable to me. I used the sprayer to put on the gator hide, and I tinted the paint. No matter how many times I did it, and I did it, I've lost count, it would leave a ripple effect. And I honestly thought maybe it was just the table, because when I rolled, I had the same effect. And I went in different directions and I thought that the ripples were staying in the same place. Last night, I stopped using the gator hide and <laughs> this was full when I started. Not good. And, and of course, when you have a sprayer, you have some overspray, although the Wagner doesn't overspray that much, but apparently I used a lot of gator hide. Not all on the table, obviously. Everything else worked just fine. It's just that tabletop. Last night, I decided to use this. It's an extra flat, 
Is that what it says? Clear Ultra Flat. I stirred it up. You have to stir Minwax Polycrylic so well, and I did. Uh, it was brand new can. Stirred, scraped that bottom, got all that junk off the bottom, because there's always stuff on the bottom. And then I poured it into my sprayer, and I added the paint. I tinted it, stirred that up, and then I sprayed it, and it looked worse. <laughs> So I did it again, thinking, okay, well, it is a different finish, so I'm gonna spray it again. Um, maybe it'll even out. No, it got worse. Um, there were areas that were shiny and areas that weren't. And quite frankly, I didn't know what to do anymore. Whatever I did was making it worse. Today, I took my orbital sander with a 220 grit and I sanded the whole surface for a long time and I looked and it's better but um, you know there's so many layers on there I wasn't afraid of getting down to the paint however at some point I was going to so I needed to stop stay tuned there was way more drama in this project than I had anticipated but it all came out in the end look how slow I learned how to paint you have to overlap, which I was doing, but not enough. And we finally put the table up on its side and it worked. It actually looks beautiful now. Yay. I used the finishing pads on the drawers before I put the hardware on and just wiped it down with a microfiber cloth. And oh my gosh, it just looked so nice when I was finished. I was so excited <laughs> look at how great it just looks so cool a little more buffing on the base with the finishing pads and the microfiber cloth i love those things it just makes it look so nice and i'm just putting on the hardware and you know what that means we are almost finished. Well, friends, this project has come to an end. That's all I have for you this week. And whoa, this was a big one. This was a doozy of a project, but I'm smiling. <laughs> I've sent photos to the customer and she is very pleased. So I am pleased. Now comes the paperwork. Ugh. I really am very proud of this project. Uh, just a couple tips. Always, always, always make sure you have some top coat of what you've used. Uh, handy, mixed in with some paint that you used, just in case you need to make some last minute touch ups because you want to deliver the best product possible. You wanna be proud of your work, always. I'm proud of my work, so I think this was a success. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Thanks.